Hey coach, so this past year, six and one in district play, made it all the way to the semifinals. Man, we're a play or two away from being in the finals uh, this just this past year. Kind of tell me, what's 22 look like for your team? Uh, to do that, I got to look back at what we did. Um, you know, we established a culture, you know, and, and that's never a knock on what was done previously. It's just a new thing. Uh, you know, we got a group of guys that are completely bought into the new way of doing things. And that's where I have optimism in, uh, you know, what we've got looking forward to next season. Graduated some very talented guys, but uh, uh, having a program that's, you know, feels more established as opposed to a bunch of guys learning the way we do things is, is really encouraging for next year. This offseason is a lot different than last offseason. There was a lot of change. Uh, this year, there's not the change. Uh, last year, you know, on a personal level, trying to move my family here, uh, getting established, trying to get a staff fired. Uh, staff hired was the number one priority, um, whereas this year it's a continuation of what we've already built. Um, you know, we're able to jump right into uh, the weight room and doing things in the weight room the way I want them done. Uh, kind of a coincidence and a funny thing that happened last year was our strength staff uh, all got quarantined right after I got the job. <laughs> yeah, I uh, so I got to kind of dive in and uh, where I thought I was going to just evaluate for a little while, I had to basically take it and run with it. Uh, the, the good thing about that was I had it going the way I wanted it to go right away. Social media, first of all, that's a, a product of hiring good people, um, you know, and people that share your values and want to get that branding and that messaging out there. Um, so that's a priority for, for our guys, our staff. Uh, to the Tree is something uh, we kind of settled on, uh, you know, midway through last spring. You know, you go all the way back to the days when they played at Kirkland Field. Coach Ragsdale planted a tree down there in the, the south end, uh, past the end zone, behind the goalpost. You know, when I was growing up, years later, it was that tree I had to deal with when the PATs were uh, going through the uprights and I had to go get it as a ball boy and deal with that tree. Um, it's iconic for people that have come through Broken Arrow. Um, it's something I wanted to tie in tradition-wise. Uh, but then the messaging, uh, you know, currently, is that it's past the goalpost. Um, you know, everybody's going to the goal line. Uh, we want to separate ourselves and do something a little bit further, a little bit more. Uh, so for us, we use that, that saying of we're going to go to the tree. We're not just going to go through the goal line. We're going to go all the way to the tree. You know, that quarterfinal win was huge, number one, because it was uh, you know, a playoff win. Uh, we had earned the right to be able to play it at home, uh, which was a big deal. Uh, it's always a big deal. Um, and then the, you know, the irony of being able to play Owasso and, and uh, my dad uh, was something that's a big deal to a lot of people that cover it. For us, it was getting Broken Arrow's team ready to go play Owasso's team. Um, you know, dealing with it after the fact was kind of funny. I joked with my staff that dad had to call me the next day and they asked why. I said, well, tomorrow's my birthday. He has to call me. So he, he manned up and called me, which was big. And then, yeah, we, we did Thanksgiving over at mom and dad's house. We do everything over there. Um, we, we honestly, we'll talk a lot of ball in the terms of, uh, you know, coaching and, and philosophy and, and things like that, but we really didn't rehash the game a whole lot. The influence in how I coach, it, it goes uh, to a lot of people. Um, I usually comment on the fact that I don't even know who to give credit for a lot of the times. So I've been a lot, around a lot of great coaches, um, but the easy one is dad. Uh, even deeper than that, my grandpa, uh, who's a Hall of Fame Oklahoma coach. Um, you know, I, I grew up watching uh, the way he did things, uh, Dad. Um, specifically, the, the value uh, and the importance of investing and making an impact in, in young people's lives and then even in, in grown men and in, in a staff. Um, I think a lot of coaches eventually get to that as being a priority for them. I had the fortune and the blessing of, of growing up and watching that uh, take place. And so it's something that was always a priority for me when I went into this, this profession. My name is Josh Jackson, and I'm a sports performance training specialist at Next Level Athletics. I'm working alongside Mitch Ulner with the Futures program from College Promoters to give these kids the athletic advantage they need by refining their speed, explosiveness, power, and all the things that make up a great athlete. We're gonna give these kids everything and more that they need to accelerate their game. Hi, I'm Mitch Allner with College Promoters Oklahoma, and with our Futures program, we're gonna be working with the younger generation of kids because 
When it comes to sports, it starts at this age. We're gonna be working with kids from third grade all the way up to sixth grade, working on speed, explosion, but more importantly, we're gonna be working on the skills of the game of football, ball handling, throwing the ball, how to carry the ball correctly, how to learn the game and what actually you're gonna to need to know on the field and not just how to run straight. We're gonna provide a full experience to our kids and to our families that are involved. With our Futures program, we are investing in our kids' future. Is it time to give your home an upgrade? The remodeling experts from locally and family owned Art Construction and Roofing can give your property a brand new look. From roof replacement, exterior remodel, to kitchen and bath remodels. Depend on our over 20 years of experience for high quality remodeling work. We're a fully licensed and insured business and we know how to get the job done right. It's not just construction, it's art. For over 10 years, I've been fighting to recover millions of dollars on behalf of my clients that have been injured in car wrecks. The last thing you need to worry about is fighting against an insurance company. Let me fight for you. Call 918-582-7775 and set up your free consultation today. Sports Insider is produced by Big Wheel Digital Media. Professional web development, Google marketing, and stylized video production are all in our wheelhouse. Our multi-track recording and post-production studio is located at 5840 South Memorial Drive, Suite 210. Call us or email us today to discuss creative solutions for your business marketing and growing your brand. 918-921-4818, bigwheeldigitalmedia.com. Leading up to, you know, upcoming season here in 22, I mean, obviously you got a lot of work to do in the off season, just like every program. Who are some players on your team that you're excited about and that people should be looking for? Well, we've got a lot of talent coming back. Um, you know, the, the, the names that people are going to hear about, the guys that I think are going to be highly recruited. Uh, Jamison Mejia uh, is a left tackle for us, uh, huge frame, very athletic, and he really kind of came into his own about midseason this year a guy that I think is going to end up on a D1 roster. One name that uh, most people know about already is a guy named Dietrich Moore. Uh, he got hurt in the Ed Edmond Santa Fe game, uh, had had a phenomenal season up to that point, and, and we're looking for big things from him. Uh, very gifted, very special athlete that I think is going to make a big splash in the recruiting world. Uh, this facility is second to none. Uh, you know, obviously the weight room, the indoor, uh, you know, when weather's not great, we, we never have an issue with coming in here and getting the work done we need to get done. Uh, this weight room, uh, these, these players spend more time in here than they do anywhere else. We even feed them in here. I mean, they, they literally uh, breathe, lift, eat. Uh, everything they do is in this, this room. Uh, we've got a strength staff that I think is phenomenal. They do a great job. Our coaching staff, uh, you know, in the off season, they're strength coaches. Uh, so this is where they live and, and we're blessed to have this, this facility. You know, our numbers are huge, um, and that's a good thing. Um, it's also the challenge that you face. Um, we're fortunate to have a big staff. Um, we have a, a great uh, a youth organization that does a phenomenal job, uh, great facilities even for those youth guys. Uh, connecting with them is critical and building that vertical alignment that you want to have throughout your whole program. I have a great eighth grade staff, a great, great ninth grade staff. Uh, and then our varsity staff is, is big enough that we can manage the numbers. Uh, community's huge, and that was the most attractive thing about taking this job, to be honest with you. I, I, and I said it to everybody that would listen, it's about the people. Uh, not only the people from top down administratively uh, that are genuine and sincere and, and want the best for our kids, um, but this community, as big as we are, it feels like a small town uh, vibe. Um, everybody's plugged in. I think the secret to that is making sure we plug into the community. Um, and then there's a, an aspect, especially these days, uh, with social media the way it is and the attention that everybody's trying to get, of even recruiting your own kids um, and keeping them in BA. Um, I've got a little idea. I'm going to create a patch that will go on their future letter jacket at BA uh, that I want to go you know, house by house and award to some top kids 
you know, K through six, uh, K through seventh, all the way before they transition into school ball. Biggest and the toughest challenge of the transition, I think, from youth football to school ball is the academic side and the accountability that comes with that. Uh, you know, just because you want to play on game day uh, doesn't mean you get to if your grades aren't where they're supposed to be. And, and teaching kids that as early as possible is, is a big deal. I think the, the promotion uh, aspect of, of getting your guys that want to play at the next level, uh, that exposure is, is a key piece, uh, especially in today's uh, environment. Um, you know, I think it's critical for parents to see you actively doing that. Um, it's just another gesture, uh, honestly, of, of showing uh, the parents and the families that you're doing everything you can to give them the opportunities that they've earned. Um, I think the most important piece is the relationship aspect. Um, you know, when college coaches want to reach out, your word means something. Uh, so if you stand on the table for a guy and say, this guy is going to make an impact in your program this way, um, you know, that, that, that's got to mean something. Um, and so I don't take that lightly. I don't take that responsibility lightly. Um, we want to put everybody out there that has a desire to play college football um, because you never know the match. You never know the, uh, how the fit is going to be for each individual. And so you promote them all. Um, but then what it really boils down to is, is your word and that relationship that you have with those other coaches.